Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Kennywood Holiday Lights. Break out your hot chocolate because we have a very special treat for you. This evening, reading Twas the Night Before Christmas, is the one and only Sally Wiggins. You guys know there's someone special whom I actually adore, and I interviewed him about a month ago. And every year, he reads this to his defensive players. Does anybody know who that man is who always reads the night before Christmas? Dick LeBeau. So I get to, I won't near, do it nearly as well and with such feeling as he does. Actually, the last time I interviewed him, he sang to me. So anyway, I'm not going to sing to you. It would be all the children would go running. So, all right, guys, are you ready? I can't believe I lost my battery. At least I have one photo of you guys, okay? Mother told me never to lick the page, but my hands are cold, so I can't think of anything else. Do you tell your kids don't lick the page with your fingers? They don't even have pages anymore, do they? No, they must have books. All right. Now, I, kids, I'm, I don't know if you can see the pictures, but I am going to hold them up after I read each page. Is that all right? And that means kids of all ages. Here we go. Now, I may start crying <laughs> because now, whenever I read to children, especially on a day like today, and I think a lot of us feel like crying, um, I always want to cry for joy. Today, I think all of us should say a lot of prayers for some very special parents in Connecticut. And this is for them. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. That's my little mouse. All right. You can see the stockings there. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. I like to call him St. Nicholas. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, with visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. While, excuse me, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. Do you guys know what sugar plums are? Hi. Oh, hi, how are you? And Mama, in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. I have to make sure these pages are kind of thick. When out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. He's got these very weird stockings on. Can you imagine anybody sleeping in those? Actually, if it's a cold winter night, you might sleep in those weird stockings. Joe said it would. Joe said it would. Yes, he would. I will have to call him tonight and tell him what I did. All right. Oh, I think this is a page that opens. Here we go. Oh, this is an open page. Wait a minute. I just sat on my microphone. This is probably the oddest Twas the Night Before Christmas you've ever had. All right. Okay. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. Away to the window I flew like a flash tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. That's part of the window, right? You carpenters out there, that's part of the window? Okay. With a little, wait, this page open, sorry. There we go. All right. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. And you know what? Think about that. I've never thought of it as miniature, and there were tiny reindeer. We always think of it as life-size, but I guess not. So it's a tiny fat little man. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment, it must be St. Nick. They don't look tiny in this picture. They look great big. I love reindeer. 
More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet and Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. Which is your favorite reindeer, guys? Kids, which is your favorite reindeer? Who? Dasher. Rudolph. Rudolph. But Rudolph's not in this story. He's in the Burl Ives story. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. That's beautiful. You can actually see everything. You don't even have to have a television. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. Would have been smart to wear gloves. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. Now I can see why he got down the chimney, because he's a tiny little fat man. Hey, it's Santa Claus. It is Santa Claus, or St. Nick, or the funny man with the long white beard. Okay. Uncle Rick. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry. His cheeks were like roses and his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. If it were written today, he probably would not be smoking. <laughs> he, he had a broad face and a round, excuse me, he had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Very good. I just heard a ho, ho, ho. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. Boy, I'd like to do that trick. Of course, I have a gas chimney. Heaven knows what would happen. <laughs> he sprang to his sleigh, and his teeth gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. I think we're almost done, guys. Now time for the tears. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all! and to all a good night.